Welcome to the Rebel Podcast today. I wanted to have a guest on to talk about this, but I thought maybe it might be more effective if I just kind of read the article to you and shared my thoughts as I walked through this article. It was in People Magazine, and this was what came across my phone this morning on this podcast it has always been my goal and my objective to provide inspiration, enthusiasm, encouragement for you to go out and achieve your dreams, to be bold, to be unapologetic for who you are and what your dreams are. When I read this article about a Delta airline passenger that was drunk, disorderly, and how he sexually assaulted a mother and a 16-year-old, her 16-year-old daughter on a Delta airline flight from JFK airport to Athens. I was so totally disgusted that I told my husband, David, if this doesn't get resolved in the right way, I will no longer fly Delta Airlines. Now, I say that not lightly. I have flown on Delta Airlines for approximately 30 years. I have a million and a half miles. I'm in their Delta sky rooms and everything. I've always been a huge supporter of Delta Airlines. They are a Berkshire Hathaway company, so... Warren Buffett and all of his shareholders also back Delta Airlines. So I felt like this was such an egregious, <laughs> horrible lack of response from Delta Airlines that this woman and mother of the underage teenage girl had to take this to court and it's in court right now. And I think it is disgusting that in this day and age, when you walk into any airport, they're concerned about human trafficking. They ask you, they tell you to read the signs and encourage you that when you're going through TSA, if you are experiencing any kind of human trafficking, if you've got any problem going on to immediately let them know and they will safely take you to some place where you can be cared for. But apparently that ends on the ground and it doesn't apply to Delta Airlines when you're at 30,000 feet on an international flight. I could not believe this. So today I want to talk about this with you. And I hope that you will enjoy it. And I want you to tell me how you feel. I want to see consumers vote and tell Delta that this is unacceptable. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. We are now going to start reading this uh, amazing story, which I started <laughs> reading this morning. In case you're looking for it, you want to look this up. You're going to go to People Magazine. It is under crime and it's called Drunk Delta Passenger Sexually Assaulted Mom and Teen Daughter on a nine hour, nine hour nightmare flight. And so this is a current lawsuit that's going on. This is, article was by Bailey Richards and it was published on July 29th of 2023 and it came out about 8.09 p.m. Eastern time on the 29th. And in the article, it talks about how the mother and the teenage daughter brought a suit against Delta. They filed the lawsuit suit accompanying, accusing the company of gross negligence after attendants continued, the flight attendants, even when the mom and even when the teenage daughter voiced concern, asked for help, asked to be reseated, they asked for 
any kind of help, they were told, oh, just be patient. Or they were basically ignored and asked to sit down, you know, take your seat kind of thing. So the lawsuit, because of the responses that the mom and the teenage daughter got after what I'm going to cover with you has occurred to them on the flight, the responses seemed so inappropriate by Delta that I had a hard time imagining this happening. I could never, ever control myself to the point that these women did either. And the daughter was so traumatized during this experience that she was having a panic attack. And in the midst of this panic attack, this man on the plane who was or is from Connecticut proceeded to do the sexual assault. It was horrible. Okay. So in the lawsuit, it's accusing the airline of gross negligence and request compensation for both of the victims. And it's also been on Fox Business. If you um, are a Fox follower and you like Fox News, you can also go over on Fox Business and take a look at it there. So court documents that were obtained by the outlet basically allege that the attendants on a flight from JFK Airport in New York to Athens, Greece, blatantly ignored pleas for help from the plaintiffs, the woman and her 16-year-old daughter. They continued to serve the man involved here who is sitting literally next to them. And I'm assuming that since he's sitting next to them, they were in coach, they weren't in business, or they weren't in first class. Because when you're on an international flight and you're in those kinds of spaces, you typically um, don't have complete close access like that on the newer planes. So Delta attendant served the clearly drunk man. Remember, this is a nine hour flight from wheels up to touchdown. So that means actually they probably had an eight hour window to serve this man alcohol. So in eight hours, this man, this intoxicated Delta male passenger was getting drunker and drunker because Delta flight attendants continued to serve him alcohol. Now I have been on pl planes, flights that are domestic where if a passenger is inebriated, is intoxicated, is deemed to be a problem for many different reasons, I have seen service for additional alcohol denied. I have seen other suggestions, uh, you know, water, coffee, tea, that kind of thing, non-alcoholic, uh, offered in place of a, another alcoholic drink. Delta flight attendants continued to serve him alcohol. The lawsuit was filed in the Eastern District of New York. That's where this is taking place. The man's behavior became increasingly aggressive throughout this flight. Now, this flight took place also during the pandemic, July 26, 2022. We are just at the one-year mark here. And he verbally harassed and inappropriately touched both women. He inappropriately touched the 16-year-old underage daughter, even when the mother explained to this man that she was underage and requested him to stop. He proceeded. And then he proceeded with the mother. The man who is unidentified, who is from Connecticut, yelled and made, made obscene gestures at the mom and the underage daughter and demanded that the daughter tell him personal information, including he wanted her address <laughs> and he wanted other information to where he could actually contact her. Is that scary? So when the teen's mother informed the intoxicated man that her daughter was, is a minor, 
He drew attention from all the other passengers when he said that he didn't care and proceeded to reach over the 16 year old to grab at the mother's at arm this point on the flight when all of this started going. The daughter was in the middle seat. The man was next to the daughter and the mom was on the other side of the daughter. And it sounded like to me, the mom was on the aisle. So the mother reached out to the Delta flight attendant, told her that the man was making them feel unsafe, requested that he be moved and cut off the alcohol because you know the guy was clearly out of control and getting belligerent. The flight attendant said, oh, just be patient. Oh, my God. That's problem number one right there. Nobody's listening to the customer who's definitely not having a good experience. Okay. At one point, the head attendant did intervene, telling the Connecticut man to stop talking to the plaintiffs and instruction that prompted him to come back angrily and yell profanities and call the mother and teen both effing bitches. And this is going on in a cabin where there's mixed ethnicities, cultures, all kinds of things, right? And this guy is yelling obscenities and derogatory remarks like that. An airplane is just like a ship. What the captain says goes. When something like this is reported, the captain can take and has the power to take decisive action. And typically, there are air marshals that do ride on international flights as well as domestic flights. And they're there for passenger safety, your safety and my safety in case there's you know, something unseemingly going on here with security, bomb threats, physical, personal harm going on. And I'm not sure why there's no mention of an air marshal here. And I'm not sure why there's no mention of this main flight attendant going to the captain and having the captain take a decisive action. And at no point was this man from Connecticut ever reported on anybody's radar. That's number two of what makes this super, you know, egregious in my opinion. The filing states, the legal filing, states that the terrified teen began to have a panic attack as she put her head in her mom's lap. When the man frightened her by reaching over to her and putting his clammy fingers underneath her shirt, reaching up her shirt to the clasp on the back of her bra strap. Now, as a mom, I don't know how I would have controlled myself, especially with my daughter's head in my lap, who's clearly having a panic attack, who clearly feels threatened. And I don't know if she couldn't breathe. I don't know if she was crying. I don't know what was going on, but I used to suffer from severe panic attacks on airplanes and it, it is not good. And, you know, short of taking a Xanax or some other medication, it's really, really hard when you feel trapped to be able to get a panic attack under control while you're in the air. And especially on a long haul flight like that. So now here's this creep, drunk, highly intoxicated, being belligerent and now he's laying hands on a 16 year old girl who's having a panic attack because it's overwhelming to her trembling petrified and crying the girl jumped up out of her seat in other words she was in the middle seat 
She literally jumped over her mother to get away from this guy, moved away from the alleged assaulter. He then proceeded, okay, now the seat's empty between them. <laughs> he then reaches over across the empty seat. And here's what it says. He proceeded to put his hand on her mother's leg, moving it up the inside of her thigh, prompting her to jump out of her seat as well. So all of this is described in the lawsuit. Now, just so you know, this was probably an eight hour window that he had to drink. And what did he have to drink? It says in the article, he was drinking vodka tonics. He had 11 vodka tonics and one glass of wine. So I had a friend of mine calculate up what, how much alcohol are we talking about here, right? I mean, so that's 12 drinks in an eight hour period, roughly, because you can't drink going up and coming down. I'm assuming they're in coach. So roughly, he's in eight hours, he's had a, uh, 12 drinks, 11 vodka tonics, <laughs> a glass of wine. So my friend said that he thought that was a pint of alcohol, a pint, roughly, just being conservative. All right. So after the harassment had escalated from a verbal to a sexual assault, the mother requested that the flight attendant change their seats. But they allegedly said there was nothing they could do. You know, you've heard that. Oh, I'm sorry. All the seats are taken. This is a full flight. You've heard that. I've heard that. We've all heard that, right? But thank God for good Samaritans. A different male passenger on the plane who was aware of all of this stuff going on volunteered to switch seats with the teen. So he set, this volunteer man, set between the mom and the perpetrator over here in the corner. And the daughter went and sat in the Samaritan seat. Okay, so when that happened, the remainder of the trip was calm, was quiet, and there were no more problems. After the plane landed, Delta staff allegedly allowed the intoxicated man, this is the real problem number three here, <laughs> to exit the plane without alerting local authorities or US law enforcement about what happened and offered the mother 5,000 airline points as an apology. Is that disgusting? Are you outraged? I think it is horrible. Uh, Did not comment on the lawsuit, but this is what Delta said in a statement to Fox Business, said that the airline has zero tolerance for customers who engage in, in inappropriate, in inappropriate, okay, <laughs> and unlawful behavior. Nothing is more important than the safety of our customers and our people, Delta told the outlet. Well, if that's true, I, I fail to see and I fail to understand how a woman, a mom traveling with her underage 16-year-old daughter can both be touched inappropriately can both be sworn at, disrespected, and suffer a sexual assault, basically, in front of these passengers. I mean, they have witnesses right there. How, how they can go through that, and not one mention of the pilot, right? It's his ship. It's his crap. He's in control. The pilot is the law when you're in the air. There should be an air marshal on there, somebody, and at bare minimum, when you land at an airport, 
some decisive action should have been taken. I love the, that the Good Samaritan spoke up and intervened on behalf of the mom and the daughter because nobody else did and nobody else was trying to help them. So kudos to him. But to go and then backhandedly offer 5,000 airline points, you know, 5,000 points probably on Delta is probably worth $25. It has zero, zero to do with what happened. It's like a slap in the face. And it's like saying, you know, yeah, you you had a little bit of an issue, but you know, oh, you'll get over it. Oh, it's no big deal. But it is a big deal. If somebody's touching you and they're touching your upper inner thigh and they're touching they're under your daughter's shirt and they're touching her bra strap and the connection to where the bras hooking together. That is disgusting. I honestly don't know how she or the daughter kept their composure enough to not do something to the man, like, you know, slapping, scream at him or something. I just, and you know, it probably would have been interesting if that would have happened because I'm sure they probably <laughs> It probably would have said the mom and the daughter were out of control versus this drunk guy. So I don't think that this is a good deal. And because of this, I think I'm officially going to boycott Delta until I see some demonstrable actionable evidence that this guy from Connecticut who is still unnamed who has been protected more than the victims I just really feel like the CEO of Delta the pilot of that plane and the flight attendants of that plane need to hold a press conference they need to pay this damages and they need to apologize to this mom and her daughter and this perpetrator who committed this sexual assault and was rude and belligerent i think he needs to go to jail for a bit he needs to sit and think long and hard about his behavior how he's treating women how he acts in public and maybe he needs to get some help for substance abuse. I don't know. However, I would like to hear what you think. Is this drunk and disorderly sexual assault enough to make you speak up? And is it enough to make you say, hey, Delta, even though I'm over a million miles on your airline, or I don't care, maybe you've only got 100,000, or maybe you've only flown on Delta once. But because of the nature of this and the lack of compassion by the airline for these women suffering this, I feel like they need to sit down and they need to apologize to all their passengers. I don't know if I got on a Delta flight, if anybody would even care if I was having a problem either. And my God, if this is happening <laughs> over that kind of thing, what about the Me Too movement? What happened to that? Did, ever, did we forget about that? Did everybody kind of fly off the planet and say, okay, pandemic's over, we can go back to being crazy or something? No, I don't think that happened. And I also find it deplorable. This could be anybody being sexually assaulted. It could be male, female, it could be LGBTQ+. It could be anybody, right? It could be anybody taking public humiliation, sexual assault, and abuse. But it should never be tolerated. It should not be something that a especially a flight attendant should tell a passenger be patient or I can do nothing 
right? And then for him to yell inappropriately back at the main flight attendant who did try to do something, I feel like she was intimidated or I don't know what was going on, but it would be interesting for her to speak up. And if she did tell the captain and the captain chose not to do anything about it, then the captain should be reprimanded. That's unacceptable. I also know that Delta, uh, some of the pilots um, did demonstrate over at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. I know that they're upset about pay, long hours, unsafe working conditions, et cetera. I've seen it, I've heard it, I've talked to lots of the pilots. That was back at the first part of May, well after this had happened. But I would hope and pray who's ever in charge, whoever is going to stand up like the CEO of Delta, right? And shareholders of the airline should speak up and demand leadership, take accountability and make sure that this passenger who did this to these women is rightly and justly convicted and serves time and apologizes. And I hope that he would get help too so that he would never ever want to act like that, drink like that, or, you know, touch people inappropriately. Because obviously there's something desperately wrong there too. So I would hope that everybody can come out of this a better person. Thank you for listening. And please take the time to go on Spotify, listen to my music and vibe out. And I'm trying desperately to get my new song when I grow up. <laughs> trying desperately to get that out but we have hit some glitches with our sound engineer over in the UK so, so you have a great week ciao for now and be the rebel in your world make the world a better place